Hello, welcome to this Piling Software w webinar. Today we're looking at the various Piling programs um, the Oasis. Quite a few, each program looking at sort of different aspects and we'll, we'll run through them all, all in order. Each have their own specialities. And what we're looking at is using Pile to, do, to, to work out how long it should be, Pill set to look at how it settles, Alp, um, its sort of movements and cage length and that sort of thing, ADC for the reinforcement, and uh, AdSec for the sort of stiffness and cracking. We'll also look at, at um, GSA raft. That's a sort of slightly side story. So, Pile first of all. It's vertical load carrying capacity of a pile, either tension or compression, layered soils, um, both allowable and ultimate, um, all the different sections within the pile, so round, square and hollow and H and so on. Um, and unlike people's individual um, spreadsheets, fully quality controls. So let's have a look at PAL itself. So PAL, I uh, shall just run through creating a new model. Um, last options first of all, working load or design resistance. Um, and if you're working to Eurocodes, you can use various um, partial factors and so on in here. <laughs> All design resistance um, partial factors. We can also look at either a single pile or a range of pile lengths. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to go for a pile somewhere between 2 and 20 meters long. Let's have in um, is it 19 segments. That's 18, isn't it? 18 segments. Um, pile starts at the ground surface and there's other options about how the information is given and calculated. The geometries I mentioned can be hollow, including plugs, H piles, but I'm going for a um, CFA pile, so solid, circular, without underream. 600 diameter. Then we need to set up materials. Imagine, uh, so, soil material layers. So we have total stress and, and effective stress uh, materials available to us. Obviously, the air void is not much material, doesn't give much resistance. Um, and this is to do with drained and undrained materials. Um, so, if I have uh, effective stress at the top, it's sort of a sort of lightweight made ground or something like that, which is going to contrib contribute to negative skin friction. And then maybe some something clay-like below there, and maybe something granular um, down below that. Now these soils need to be applied in the layers, and so first one up at ground level, and next one there's below meters below ground level, and then at eight meters down you've got. Prop number three. So we've got three layers. Now, having we also need to, of course, specify what these properties are. Right. So the two two. This is the total stress. Let me put in some um, um, various properties on this, and then. Calculate that some sort of end bearing capacities, and likewise for the effective stress. Let's so this would be the um, top layer, and this is not very strong. This top layer. Um, And then for the lower level, it is a lot better. <coughs> mm. 
Oops. So, some example material properties. We can specify groundwater in here. So, uh, two meters below, we could specify pressure. Um, so, for aquifers and that sort of thing. Uh, I think we're ready to go. Let's analyze that and see if I've remembered everything. So the outputs, obviously all the input parameters, but also um, the various results, you know, um, compression and tension capacities. But we can see that in the graphical output a bit better. So if I call up the, let's face it, the, the ultimate um, compression and tension capacities, you know, the big effect of the end bearing, we get down to material 3. Now, if we were if we were wanting a pile capacity to carry pile to carry say three thousand kilonewtons, we would need from this well by I it's about thirteen meters long. Let's check in the table. Um, there we go. Yep. So if we have a thirteen meter long pile, that will carry are 3,000 kilonewtons. But how much will it settle under that load? This is where Pilset comes in. Pilset, pile settlement. It gives you the settlement of the pile, but also the settlement of the ground around the pile as well. Plus, uh, stresses in the pile, obviously the, the pile stresses reduce as as you go down the columns, it sheds. You just give the dimensions, so source stiffness, but you can also input negative skin friction uh, and heave effects as well. So, look at pill set. Again, I shall add in this um, this model again. So, we need a rigid bound this time. Let's drop it down to minus 30. There. So, either limit of model or bedrock and that sort of thing. Um, stiffness of the soil above and below the, the, the base down to the pile. That's all right. Number pile segments. That's fine. Uh, the pile interface. And that's it. This is the various loading levels. Um, at zero, we'll just take um, sample soil, but we'll apply this 3,000 kilonewton. I'll also add in 10 mil of soil displacement. So this is this isn't giving negative skin friction on on the pile. Then. Uh, two meters down, we've got the, the clay starts, no load, no other movement, and at minus eight, we've got the um, the sand coming in, and then the bottom of the pile. Now, what did we say? Minus thirteen, wasn't it? For the the far end of the pile. For the output, we have the radii. Now, obviously, we've got the um, deformation of the pile itself, but we will need the radii of the soil. Now this is from the pile centre line, so if I just do it in um, half meter circles, and this conversion criteria because there's some it iterative um, things going on under the bonnet. Let's not worry about that. Let's analyse this and see what we get. So usual text output and tabular values for the various um, to the pile itself mm, settling 17 mil at the top that's um, a reasonable amount why that is under ultimate load and let's look at the the displacement criteria so the pile itself and the various soil settlements. And you can see um, colour codes as the radius increases, the settlement decreases. Alright. Now, assuming we're happy with that settlement, um, uh, a question on pile, um, Ian, I shall come back to that question at the end. Um, on a 
compression tension capacity, if that's alright. It's all there. Okay, now, once we are um, happy with the settlement, let's look at the horizontal loading capability. This is where ALP comes in. So, horizontal loading on the piles. You'll get out of it to the bending moments and shear forces and deflections of the pile, having put in the sole layers. Um, you can put in, you, know, you can vary the pile stiffness as you go down, you can vary the you have cap and ground beam sort of stiffness to give restraint to the top of the pile cap. And you can apply lo loads of moments or saw movements as well um, and surcharges. So for example you could maybe take saw, saw movements from um, Siren uh, and see how the pile copes under seismic loads for example. So let's look at but in our particular case, we haven't got size We're just applying some uh, horizontal load to this pile. Now, uh, the soil data you can use plastic, plastic soils. I'm going to be using the PY curves, but in the wizard case, I just need to set up the um, elastic for the moment. So let's the bottom pile we said was 13 meters down. Top of the pile is at zero. Diameter is going to be 0 0.6 or 24 inches, if you prefer. The PAL EI about 70,000. Um, the load, the load is going to be. Let's put it down at minus one. 150 kilonewtons. I could apply moments as well, but I'm not going to this time. So the salt top level is at zero. Those values are okay. Water level is at minus two, and let's just take a one uh, constant node spacing. Now, I'll, now I'll set it to PY curves, and you notice know, we're using PY. You can also have cyclic loading on the piles as well. So the nodes, as you can see, it has generated the nodes, but we need to put our soil level data in now. So top node. Now let's just squeeze it down so we can see what's going on on the nose. Top node, node 1, and that is well made ground soft clay. Yeah, wait, say 16 um, and some other values. Now the clay will start at R3, so that's node 4. And then the sandal level will start further down at minus eight, and that will be a sand. Right. There we have the model. So the pile properties, constant thickness. Um, unless you can vary the stiffness of the pile. Ground water we've got there already. Applied loads. We can add in restraint in here as well. So let's say at the top, at node one, we haven't got any. Um, maybe we've got um, um, a sort of lateral um, stiffness from um, adjacent structures. Maybe a bit of ground um, sharing of the brace bay out of the rest of the structure. And we can add in a um, a rotational stiffness as well. So sort of a bit of load sharing going on. We can also do surcharges if we want on the ground. Right. Let's analyse this. No errors. I was like that. Results. Tabular results output and so on, but but the graphical output is very useful to me. You can see what's going on. There's the soil pressures. We have the um, rotation of the pile and the deflection of the pile. And you see we're, f in terms of effective length, we're down about nine meters down. Um, and let's look at the, see the bending moments. Get a bit of bending moment, be it below that. But I'll keep my bending moment um, at the top, 
and also shear forces as well. Right, so the let's clear this up. So the peak moment we're looking at uh, must be about 100, 120, 125, and we're getting mm, still a reasonable amount of deflection on this. Um, I may have to look at that, but meanwhile. Um, we have some figures we can now take into the structural design. So the structural design we can use ADC, which is reinforced concrete design of columns or, or piles, slabs and beams. So ground beams, superstructure beams, um, f um, solid slabs, supporting floors, etc., etc. You give it the spans and supports and applied moments and overall concrete sizes. ADC will give you the re reinforcement required and also the design moments. So, for example, if you we've got a 150 um, moment at the top of that pile, but when you apply the axle load as well, you also get an eccentric moment, and add ADC will automatically add that in. Likewise, if you do the slabs, then you'll get patch loadings. So let's. Uh, I don't have it open at the moment. So let's. Far up ADC and create a new file. So, column design. You know, we've got quite a wide range of um, design codes, including um, a number of American codes and the Euro codes as well. I am going to use a Euro code, British Euro code, column design. Let's check. Section is going to be that 600 diameter. Concrete grades look good. Reinforcement grades look good. And we said it's going to be 9 meters long and it's going to be that sort of restraint condition. Now the actual force at the top was 3000. Moments at the top was. Um, Did we say the moments at the top were? We didn't. Moments at the top. Right up. Bending uh, about 64. Peaking at 620. Sizes and reinforcement sizes, um, main bars and links, the arrangement, um, various different sizes, um, also set, set set by cover rather than the um, diameter. Let's the cover is going to be 75 mil or three inches, and we have n numerous detailing checks. So let's see if we've got a section which works. Now, first of all, ADC will give us a list of sections which meet the detailing rules. And if we now design these, hmm, lots have failed. Have I got one which works? Let's look at the results. Uh, have I ever calculated the moment? I need to look at that. But in the meantime, what I'll do is I will, for the purposes of this demonstration, I will cheat and just. Um, half those moments for the moment. And he thinks that the section size might not be big enough. Right. So some are still failing. 
but we have two which work. There's 19 and 37. Now 37 is the one with the lowest, um, see in the blue there, the, the one with the lowest area of steel. That's 12 T32s um, and the other option is 8 T40s. So let's look at so either Either or eight T40s, both nice and chunky. Let's go for the twelve T32s now, um, and let's see how that um, works in terms of serviceability and other checks. Now, for that, we need to go through into AdSec. AdSec is non-linear section analysis, concrete and composite section, so you just reinforce concrete or as you can see in the, uh, the splash screen you can um, stick a beam down the middle and, and um, make a composite with, with, with the pile, king post, that sort of thing, columns, beams etc. Unlike ADC where it gives you the reinforcement, AdSec, you give AdSec the reinforcement and it will tell you whether the section is good enough how much it cracks, how stiff it is, for example if you're doing your ALP um, EI um, numbers you can extract these, these from ADSEC. So let's fire up ADSEC and put in that same section again. Again Euro codes. Um, we have the same range of codes in ADSEC as well as ADC. 600 diameter pile. Um, Ian, you're asking about shear force on ADC. Um, neither ADC nor or ADC column design and ADSEC do not do shear checks at the moment. Um, we're looking to add shear checks into the ADC column design. ADSEC doesn't do shear because it's a generic cross section analysis and it's very much a slice through the column and shear requires for a three-dimensional knowledge of the section and of course the codes only really deal with shear for rectangular sections though you can get guidance on circular sections so that's where we are at the moment yeah um, so add sex purely cross-sectional um, yeah the shear will be coming but I didn't add it into ADC at the moment so add in my reinforcement 75 mil cover, 10 mil links, um, and then we saw it say it was we'll be using 12.32 won't we? I'm going to go back, you'll notice that there is a cover code, um, so, so, so some of the design codes you can actually calculate the cover for, good, cover, cover for you, it was in this case. We can also add in um, into ADSEC particular bars which can be pre-stressed and so on with the single lines of bars and so on so you can do some quite clever things so let's finish with that and add in our loads now section force now we're saying 3000 kilonewton with a top moment of what we're saying 30 weren't we and low case 2 now the Lo axle load when we're lowered down. If I go to pill set, it was nine meters down. Show me the pile stress. So nine meters down. I can look at the table, but it's let's just take half um, the axle load for the moment. I can work it out in a bit more detail. And the moment there was three hundred. 
with these low cases we can now define uh, low cases these are ultimate low cases and for serviceability um, I just need to reduce the factor um, now ultimate loads we can get the strength let's look at the results and from here we can see well the moment capacity as it happens is working about 42 um, percent and it's down there and it's all working to get the stress and strains out of the reinforcements of course just do a load check which um, tells you whether how well the sections do in sort of stretch forwards pass or fail you can also get the axial moment chart calculations and onto this we can then plot those load cases you see they're quite comfortably inside hmm. um, likewise the moment charts now the moment axial loads were one half and three thousand again we can add our load points in there and you see they're again quite comfortably within the circle right. yes designs go I think this is mm, a bit conservative in some respects but that's because we've reduced the load successfully um, now we talk about out from the out was sort of kind of the pile EI value seventy thousand was is a sort of gross concrete cross section, but we can use adsec to calculate the actual um, well if it's actual zero one and a half thousand and three thousand kilonewtons on this section and see what the EI value is we can put back into out wait for it to calculate. Um, and you can see for an axial load of, of zero, we're getting quite a high stiffness um, to begin with, and then it cracks and yields at the moment of around about 100, um, and then we have the general yielded stiffness, which is not far from 70. Now, at the top of the pile, we've got an axial load of 3,000, and so at the moment of quite low moments, so stiffness of 105. Thousand, whereas low down where the moment is higher, about 300, we've got a slightly lower stiffness. So we can take these values and we can put them back into the Alp pile property um, data. So we can adjust the the pile stiffness for the applied load. Now. Then, Add sec, we can also calculate, as I mentioned, the um, cracking. So, apart from the um, stresses and strains and other outputs at the bottom, we get um, crack calculations. And for our loads, we're coming in below 0.1 mil, which is quite acceptable. We can also see on the graphical view we see um, the, these are the two bars and the crack zones that the that ADSEC is considering these are sort of the high stress bars high stress and the um, next high stress zone and the crack area we're getting Um, now that's sort of, that's sort of, now at that stage you then need to cycle back and uh, and and, and recheck the pulse stiffness and size and so on, um, but you've got the idea. 
Now we also have a, another part program called GSA Raft, which is part of the GSA suite. It comes within um, GSA Building well, or a standalone program in its own right, and it's all about soil structure interaction. So you you give GSA the GSA yeah, the structural model. It might be the piles and pile cap. Um, or raft or base slab, it might include the superstructure if appropriate. You also add in the PDISP geotechnical model. So um, PDISP is the pressure displacement ca calculation, and it actually combines the two together and then gives you the output of the settlement of the structure, the soil stresses, the moments and forces, and so on on the structure. Um, it's essentially wherever the wherever you tell GSA it does it's interacting with the soil, it will generate a number of non-linear springs. And what it does really is, is it iterates between the two programs. GSA will assume a spring stiffness, calculate the f calculate a settlement, uh, and a um, a, f a soil stress. And then takes that soil stress into PDISP, which then works out the settlement from those stresses, calculates a new spring stiffness, compares it, um, compares the deflections to the GSA model, if they're different, puts the spring, new spring stiffness back into GSA, and it cycles around until the two programs converge. Now, GSA Raft is a whole program, whole web webinar in its own right, but what I'll do, I do have a model I prepared earlier, there we are. And here we have a pile cap with um, varying length piles. Um, I suspect the uh, contractor might have decided to save from concrete, maybe. But this is where the uh, the pile cap is at the moment. Um, we also, as I mentioned, we have in here the um, the P disp information and these and the, and the structure then interacts with the um, with the structure at the various nodes which we can show much clearer in the graphical view so the piles interacting um, down the length and the rafts interacting at the top we also have the soil capacity in the. No, let me just close some of these other. Programmers down there. So you can see we, we've got the um, the soil, the PDISP soil zones in here. Now from this we then get the bending moments. Let's add it in the other direction as well. So we've got the, um, moments on the piles. We're getting. The axial loads on the piles, we can have um, what's actual values settlement of the, of the structure. In this case, the uh, the pile cap. So it's going down about thirty five mil. Uh, we should have had longer piles in there, I think. Um, we can also get the um, soil results out. So, for example, the contact pressure in the Z direction um, well, contact shear stress on those piles or or the um, or the soil node results so we're getting um, there's our contact well, let's um, so the soil stresses under the the pile cap as well, so the, the, both 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 the inside the cap and the piles are working together. But looking at those settlements 
obviously not enough. Right. Ooh, um, so that's a quick run round all the um, the various piling programs that we look at. And you see, each has got its own particular aspect. Now, thank you all very much for attending. I hope you found that useful and I look forward to hearing from you shortly.